not be hearing me. Be able to see the. Cody Richard on the wing, going to dodge, see if he can get something going for the Skippers right now. Good defense there by the Spuds. The Skipper's going to have to get some ball movement going, and they do. It's a big check. Banks with a good play there, still has the ball, comes loose. Loose ball. Who's coming out of there with that one? Good hustle by both teams there. Red Spuds have the ball. A little sloppy start here by the Red Spuds. Skippers uh, all tied up, 0 0 8 26 to go. Peter Amstutz with you here on YouTube on the NFHS network as well. Glad to have you with us this evening and uh, skippers are playing host to the spuds of Moorhead. A shot there and a score. That's number seven, Sadowski. Breaks open the scoring here for Moorhead. Again, great to have you with us here on YouTube. Uh, Minnetonka High School lacrosse. In the face-off axe, it is Mason Jakubic. And Jakubic will battle for it in there against number two. That's Caden Green. And battled for and still not possessed and eventually picked up still. And nicely done there by Jakubic. So Jakubic. Another score there by Sid Sadowski, number seven. Sadowski gets it on the board again. Two nothing early for the visitors from Moorhead. Peter Amstutz again with you here. Thanks for joining us on YouTube. Oh, they have another number seven. Oh, thank you. Kasten Sorbanken? Sorbakken? Kaysen Sorbach in with the two goals for Moorhead. Apologize for that. And it's 2 0 early. Five minutes, 30 seconds to go. Another face off uh, battle for here. Ground ball. Eventually controlled by the Spuds. A quick shot and a nice save by Carroll there. That was Oliver Judd. So 2 nothing Moorhead early, and they have possession again here. Sorbakken works his way in, shoots, and he scores a quick hatty. For Kaysen Sorbakken, the senior attacker, and the orange-clad Spuds lead 3 nothing. Face-off violation against Minnetonka. Ball awarded to Moorhead. So it's been the Sorbakken show here in the first seven minutes. A turnover. It'll be Sanders working on that far side. Fan Sanders quickly accelerates in. 
And now a touch has been attained by Forst on the near side. That's Bodie Richard. And the skipper's chance to carve into this 3-0 advantage. Pinnataka defeated Hopkins a couple nights ago by a score of 12-3 to, to improve their record to 5-0 on the season. They're ranked number five in the state, boys high school lacrosse. And Moorhead comes in here with that 3-1 and one mark. They opened up the season with a loss to Shakopee, but then have gotten three victories since that time. Richard, nice dodge there. Spin move, still good, and a flag finally called as the ball trickles free to Sadowski. And Sadowski now going to reset the offense, so will it be a delayed penalty against the Spuds? This is Forced. Forced takes a shot, goes a bit wide, and now that delayed penalty will be enforced. Three enforcements coming in for both teams. Number 18, Thomas Schroeder checking in for the Spuds, and along with number 17, Oliver Judd. Schroeder listed as the long stick midi, and Judd as a midfielder and faceoff specialist. Between the pipes tonight, it's number 23. Colin Baumgardner, he, he will face a 30-second power play. So the penalty was called on number 25, Karsten Kuntz. Skippers with that man advantage, work it around the far side. Bobbled there by Blanks, and now the control. Loose ball. And ground ball battle for about four skippers on the scene, and one of them picks it up. And a whistle called. Schuster been, ended up getting it, but there was a violation called on Minnetonka. Now quickly the other way. Here comes Judd for Moorhead. Both teams back at even strength. Anderson now with it, number four. He's around that midfield logo. Spuds lead 3-0 early here. Two minutes 50 seconds to go, first quarter. That pass doesn't quite click, and ground ball going to be scooped up nicely by Caleb Paquin. Check that, that's, that's 14, Jeff Ullis. Meanwhile, skippers get a nice save from Carroll, and they'll start it the other way. This is John Van Bergen, long stick on the near side and gets it over to Reddington. Reddington gains the attack zone and now they get the touch. Behind the net is Bodie Richard. And the skippers look to slow it down as a couple players check in. Grant Antonson, number 18. On the attack dodge here is Blanks. Ball is ripped away from him and controlled by Baumgartner. A minute and 53 seconds to go. Skippers trail 3-0. A loose ball here as the Spuds having a hard time clearing their zone. Nice work there by Blanks and a whistle. And a timeout called by Moorhead. Moorhead brought in here by head coach Andrew Law. It's assisted by John Destrela, Logan Winkman, and Alex Kelly. So a long trip down, about three and a half hour drive from the Moorhead area. And as you may have heard earlier, depending on whether or not you're able to hear my buddy uh, Phil Richard call the first couple minutes of this contest, Moorhead will uh, play a noon game against Minneapolis. So they'll take this long drive down. They'll play Minnetonka tonight at six. And then at noon tomorrow, they'll uh, double it up, play against Minneapolis. They come in here with that 3-1 and one record. They lost the opener against Shakopee and then found the victory column against Grand Rapids, 10-1. Hermantown, they defeated 14-3, and then St. Cloud, their most recent victim, 13-4. So they come out here with their ears pinned back and looking, looking pretty good. want to say thank you to our 
Minnetonka Varsity Lacrosse sponsors, Canteen One, A. Sadowski Designs, The Lakes Running Company, Denali Custom Homes, and Horizontal. Thank you all for your sponsorship of Minnetonka Varsity Lacrosse. As we get a restart here, a few sprinkles have started to come down, a few umbrellas popping up in front of me. As we had predicted some scattered showers this evening and they look to uh, have started to roll in here. Nice pick up there by John Van Bergen and he gets the skippers in the offensive end but an errant pass results in another turnover and the Moorhead will have the opportunity to restart here on the near side. On the restart, that's Oliver Judd. Judd all the way into the attack zone, gets a touch. His pass a little high, but scooped up there nicely by Martinson. Andrew Searles with it behind his own net, and now scooped up nicely by Carroll. So a minute to go here, first quarter. Skippers trail 3 nothing, And this is a rare circumstance for Minnetonka. They have been pretty quick to score in the first quarters of most of these games, and they came out so far in these first 11 minutes and have not been able to find the back of the net. Another whistle here. And a timeout called by the Skippers. Minnetonka led in here by head coach Josh Yu, Connor Gatensby, John Drake, Mark Hegenley, Blake Barda are the assistants. Almost taking a peek at the upcoming schedule for Minnetonka. They will take on Wyzetta here on Thursday, May 5th. That's a 7.30 start, and then they'll travel to a dine on Tuesday, May 10th. So as we wind down April and into May, Skippers again with that 5-0 and record, sitting right at number five in the rankings. Top four teams are Benil, Prior Lake, Shaka, uh, Chanhassen, and Shakopee is four. Behind Minnetonka in those rankings is Stillwater, Matamidi, Buffalo, Irondale and Rosemount rounds out the top 10 in the Minnesota State High School League boys lacrosse rankings as provided by the Star Tribune. So Minnetonka with 38, check that, 43 seconds remaining in the first half to try to carve into this 3-0 advantage. A restart behind his own net is forced. Forced goes around, leaves it for... Bodie Richard, now 30 seconds left, and Richard is loses possession, but controlled there by force. Centering pass, blank shot is way wide to the left side, and it's going to stay here thanks to some good hustle from Grant Antonson, getting closest to the line as that shot fell out. 20 seconds remaining, and on the restart, it's the senior attacker, Isaac Forst. Forst works his way against double team and takes a really tough shot there. It flies well over the, the net, and nice hustle there by number 23, the goalie, Colin Baumgartner, is able to get possession for Moorhead, and they'll look to wind out these final nine seconds. So Moorhead in no particular hurry, as they do do a long pass. It's going to roll harmlessly all the way the entire length of the field, and we're done with one quarter of Minnesota State High School League varsity lacrosse. Score reads, Moorhead, three, skippers, nothing. We'll be back with the second quarter in just a moment.
Welcome back to Einer Anderson Stadium for second quarter action. Minnetonka playing host to Moorhead. Score reads Moorhead three, skippers nothing. And Judd and Jakubic will be doing battle in the faceoff X to start things off here. Skippers in those all white uniforms, blue numbers, blue trim. Visitors from Moorhead, all orange, but a white trim and white helmets and possession is lost nice defense there scooped up by Logan Yu and Yu will get into the attack zone and turns it over so here comes Warhead the other way and they're going to turn it right back over so a little bit of sloppy passing to start off the first 30 seconds of the second quarter and Another turnover, ground ball here, running on to grab that is Jeff Unless, and Unless double teamed by a couple skippers on the near side here as they do battle in front of the bench. And that pass does not click between Landstrom and Blanks and just a little bit off tonight are the skippers. Back into the attack zone. Moorhead shoots and scores. That's number 17, Oliver Judd. And Judd makes it 4 nothing. Moorhead. So back in the faceoff, Mason Jakubic and Judd and a whistle. Check that was Caden Green that time, number two, taking that faceoff. And the skippers with possession back behind their own cage. This is Bodie Richard. And a shot and a score, and the skippers are on the scoreboard now. That was Grant Anderson, the sophomore midfielder, notches that first goal for Minnetonka. So with 10 minutes, 45 seconds to go, skippers now trail 4-1. to one. Again, some light showers coming down. Phil Richard providing the umbrella coverage. for our chief videographer. Looks like Dale's doing the chores tonight. Had a, a handful of different folks working the camera this year. And after a whistle there, the ball's gonna be awarded to Minnetonka. So nice battle there from Jakubic against Oliver Judd. Judd and Green kind of alternating face-offs and the skippers with a chance to again chisel into this 4-1 advantage. Bodie Richard on the near side. Finds Schuster on this near side alley. Schuster will work against the short stick. Make it in, nice pass to Blanks, Blanks! Time and room and misses it a little high on the left side here. So good shot there from Blanks, good look. Just couldn't quite get it on frame. And Richard will restart from behind his own net. Richard comes out of front, takes a jump shot, and it's gonna stay right here. Good hustle from Forrest, getting back there to regain possession for the skippers. Now it's Forrest. He works against Matt Peters. Forrest comes around, his shot hits the post, and maybe a little bit of the goalie's stick going to stay again here with Minnetonka as Bodie will get a restart. Ten minutes to go. Second quarter. Skippers trail four to one. Again, the wind and rain starting to pick up here at Einer Anderson. Bodie Richard checked in the ball. Ground ball right in front of the cage and eventually controlled there by Colin Baumgartner. Baumgartner, the junior goalie for Moorhead. Nice little give and go there and on the gas here for Moorhead. 
Oliver Judd goes all the way in. His shot is wide, and it's going to stay. Actually, it's going to go over to Minnetonka, so nobody behind for Moorhead on that transition shot from Judd. And bringing it up for the skippers will be Cole Langvin, 17 on the near side here. Langvin with time to get a little room, and his pass would not quite click with Reddington. Reddington able to scoop, though. And here comes Steven, the junior midfielder. Gains it into the attack zone on the far side. Behind his own net, that's Pepper. And now holding here on the near side is Anderson. Anderson with a lone goal for Minnetonka tonight. Nine minutes to go, second quarter. Nice dodge here from Schuster, works his way all the way around the side, takes a shot, and nicely saved there from Baumgartner. Baumgartner with a clean save on that. Shot attempt from Schuster, and now he looks to release the other way. Good pressure from Minnetonka, and a whistle, a timeout. Called by Moorhead, so a difficult time gaining that advance. They call a timeout. Score reads, Spuds four, Skippers one. And at halftime today, we're going to have a uh, contest, contest sponsored by North Star Lacrosse. There'll be three volunteers. There'll be a potato throw. Each contestant is going to use a mini lacrosse stick to throw their potato as far as possible. Potato must come to rest between the 40 and 50-yard line. The farthest throw will win a gift card to North Star Lacrosse. So... Anyone who's willing to come out there, brave the elements. If you're in the area, stop on by. Good seats available. Think you can throw a potato with that? Restart here for the Spuds as they try to gain the timeline here. And they do get across. This is Oliver Judd. He does have one of the four goals as Judd gets a touch. And now he peels off here to the near side. Ball eventually controlled there by Caleb Anderson. Number four, Anderson works in. Goes around one player, goes around two. Gets a rough ride in there. Maintains possession, double teamed, and eventually coughs it up. Anderson with a check and tries to scoop it up, save it to his own team, and eventually controlled. That's Langvin, and a whistle, and a flag, and we're going to have a penalty call here. Cross check, one minute. Call the number 21, J.D. Landstrom. So Landstrom will serve this penalty. Again, the score reads, Spuds four, Skippers one, and now the Spuds with a one-minute power play. One-minute man advantage for the orange-clad Spuds for Moorhead. Bounce pass out front. Judd controls. Finds Searles. And now gets across midfield and an over-and-back violation. Skippers will take that and quickly restarting is Bodie Richard. Bodie Richard on the near side. And he'll wait for reinforcements. He's checking in is Schuster. Coming in quickly is Blanks. Blanks a low shot. Can't find the back of the net there. A nice save from Baumgartner. And quickly the other way, here come the Spuds. The far side, that's Yunlis. And now here with it is Martinson. As the Spuds will slow it down, still... Seven seconds left on the man advantage. Working with it now is Blythe. And a shot to score from the near side. That was Martinson. So Martinson had time and room and was able to 
hit the back of the net. Senior attackman with his first goal of the day. Seven minutes to go, and the Spuds extend the lead to 5-1. to one. Face off battle, eventually controlled here by Antonsen. Antonsen gets into the offensive zone, gets in a touch in the attack, drops it, and then controlled quickly there by Schroeder. Schroeder works on the far side against Luke Miller as the Spuds will go right back on the attack after that goal that put them up 5-1. to one. Coming out of the contest, number 18, Schroeder, and checking in is Carter Midthune, number 19. So Skipper's defense back at it again. With 16 minutes, 10 seconds, or check that, six minutes, 10 seconds to go. Got to respect the three Moorhead fans sitting all the way up at the top of the visitors' bleachers. No protection from the rain or the wind up there, but they're representing. This is Blythe. Blythe low shot and nicely saved there by Sean Carroll. So Carroll gets the save, and they center it back to Carroll as they'll try to break out of their defensive end. Ball bounces and eventually collected by Langvin. Langvin, a long cross field pass, and he clicks that one with Blank. So Blank's now in the offensive end. And an offside's called against Minnetonka. Turns it right back over to the Spuds. Spuds now back in possession here on the near side. And that ball gets away and over and back violation called. Minnetonka quickly in transition. This is Forced. Forced trying to push the action. He skies that pass to Landstrom. And a ground ball opportunity. Eventually controlled and a whistle. As they sort things out here, it's going to Stay with the skippers on the far side. This is Blanks. Four minutes, 47 seconds to go. Skippers down by four. Five to one is the score. One lone goal tonight by Grant Antonson from Minnetonka. The goal scorers for Moorhead are Sorbakken with three. Martinson and Judd have each chipped in a goal apiece. And on a run here, this is Reddington. Reddington cut off nicely. And now on the far side, it's Schuster. Schuster looks to work against a long stick and has it poked away. Nice defense there by Thomas Schroeder. Schroeder forcing the turnover. And a tough pass there is going to attempt to be saved by Moorhead and is. Nicely, now the ball on the ground, a whistle. And the ball is going to stay with Minnetonka now on the offensive end. So a turnover, see if they can do anything with this. Isaac forced. Senior attack for Minnetonka. Now Schuster spins it around to Sanders. Sanders works on the near side against Blythe. And now back behind the net, spinning around the far side. Pepper coming in off the bench. A nice cut here, a shot, and nicely saved there from Baumgartner. Got a piece of that one to keep it out. The rebound came right back out in front, a whistle, and the ball will stay with the Spuds. Three minutes, 33 seconds to go, and the Spuds have come to play tonight. Five to one the score, and a flag here. So there'll be a delayed penalty, and now a crashing check. 
that dislodged the helmet from Schuster. And we'll see what the whistle's all about. Slashing call on number six. That's forced. So Landstrom with a one-minute penalty earlier and now forced will sit for two minutes or check that one minute. Three minutes, 23 seconds to go, and a, a one-minute man advantage for the orange-clad spuds from Moorhead working to the goal on the right side of your screen. And that errant pass, but it's gonna, they're going to say it was deflected, and it's going to stay here with Moorhead. Nearside official adamant about that deflection. And... Much to the chagrin of the local fans here. 27 seconds left on this man advantage. Moorhead with that four goal lead, two minutes, 40 seconds to go, second quarter. And now the rain has just sort of settled in as a drizzle. Nice save there from Carroll, collected there by Anderson on the near side, and Anderson will reset. Just eight seconds left on this penalty to force as he gets ready to re-enter the contest. Three, two, one, and we're back to even strength. And that pass goes through about five players and eventually he's going to go harmlessly out of bounds on the far side, and it'll be Jackson Blanks on the restart for the skippers looking to carve into this 5-1 advantage. This is Landstrom. And now controlled on the far side by Henry. Back behind the net to Richard. And near side, it's forced. As the skippers look to set up some offense again. Offense has been hard to come by so far in the first 20 minutes of this contest. Schuster gets around one man, finds himself open on the near side. Bad angle, doesn't take the shot, does take that one and scores! Getting it past Baumgartner is Ben Schuster, and Schuster makes it a 5-2 to two advantage. Back in the faceoff X is Jakubic. And Oliver Judd, 17 for the Spuds. 100 seconds left in the first half. Judd has spilled a whistle. And the ball awarded to Moorhead. Moorhead with it on the far side. Near side here. This is Anderson. Anderson being blanketed there by Reddington. Now with a little bit of time and room on the far side and a tough pass eventually snagged here on the near side by Martinson. Martinson has one of the Spud's five goals. He dons the number nine and he plays the attack position as a senior. Time and room and getting past and gonna stay right here with the Spuds with 52 seconds to go. Clock continues to run. And a couple ground ball opportunities here. Nice defensive effort there from Van Bergen. Flag comes in, some pushing and shoving, and here comes a whistle. So this thing's starting to get a little bit chippy as we wind down the final ticks of this first half. A slash called on Van Bergen, a one-minute penalty. So this will, depending on the results of these last 38 seconds, could carry over into the opening seconds of the second half. Spuds, of course, will look to try to take advantage of this man advantage. Five to two is the score. Skippers have found the back of the net a couple times, and a sh shot 
from the far side and Sorbakken with four goals on the evening makes it six to two, Moorhead. So 22 seconds left, the penalty will be washed out with that goal. Caden Green, senior midi and face-off specialist in there against Mason Jakubic. Jakubic look to win this for the skippers and give them a chance with these final ticks left to make this a 6-3 game going into half. 6-2, Spud, 17 seconds to go. Skippers in the offensive end, in the attack zone. They have their touch. Comes Blanks on the far side, double teamed. Hassled there and comes in with two seconds to go. Ball deflected away and nicely defended there. That was Colby Creer getting the turnover. And at halftime, the score reads Spud six, Skippers two. We'll be back with second half action in a moment. Test, 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 test.
So the rain has really settled in here at Ian Anderson Stadium. Peter Amstutz back with you on YouTube tonight. Great to have you with us. Skippers trail 6-2 after 24 minutes of boys varsity high school lacrosse. We've got 12 minutes back on the big scoreboard left of your screen. And it's going to be Jakubic standing with him near side Schuster, number 11. And on the far side, that's Jackson Blanks doing the face-off duties for the visitors from Moorhead is Oliver Judd, number 17. Near side is Thomas Schroeder, the long stick midi. And over on the far side, number four, Caleb Anderson. As we have a bit of delay here. Looks like a little bit of a problem with the skipper's net. And now, with the help of three players, they've decided it's good to go. So we'll give the assist to Isaac Forrest on that uh, helping out with the net. It's Baumgartner in between the pipes. He's stood tall so far, just giving up a couple of goals. Both of those came in the second quarter. Ben Schuster with one and Grant Anderson. As again, the radar has settled in. Should be a little bit slipperier conditions here in the second half. And here's your opening face off of the second half. Battled for and Jakubic is going to grab it for the skipper. So a big face off win for Jakubic as he centers back behind his own net. Skipper's in business in the attack zone. This is Bodie Richard. Bodie Jr. attack. Where's number one? Gets it over to Jackson Blanks. And Blanks now will work in. Shorty v. Shorty. Blanks let fire a little bit wide to the near side. And nice hustle from Forrest. He was closest to the ball as it crossed the end line. It'll stay right here with Minnetonka. Forced on the restart behind his own net. Richard on the near side as he backs away. Now he'll start his attack behind the net. Pass doesn't quite click with Forrest and on the turnover quickly the other way. Here come the spuds. Spuds with it on the far side. Is direct, directing traffic with it is Matt Peters, number 11, the defenseman. And the ground ball scooped up there by Caleb Paquin, 24. And with that four goal advantage, patience seems to be the theme of the opening minute of the first half. Nice pass to the far side. That is Martinson. Martinson had one of these six goals for the Spuds in the first half. Caleb Anderson thought about it and plays it around here to the near side. Oliver Judd. Judd mishandled. And Skipper's looking to force a turnover. Nothing doing as it's eventually controlled by Anderson. And Anderson works out. Flag comes down. Ground ball battled for. Still going to be a delayed penalty if the skippers get control. They do not. This is Yunless on the far side, and that pass does not click with Searles. Searles does batter with Kieran Holmes, and here comes the de delayed penalty call with exactly 9.53 to go and a slashing penalty called against Blanks. Coming off a little bit hobbled on that after that possession is Ben Schuster. Schuster has his helmet off and a quick score there from the Spuds right off of that penalty. That's Oliver. 
That's Oliver Judd scoring to make it seven to two. Apologize, I was checking out Ben Schuster on the near side. Still has his helmet off. Looks like he's rubbing his head with his still gloved hand. One of the skipper's coaches coming over to consult with him. Seven to two. Nine minutes, 51 seconds to go. And Moorhead has come to play tonight. That one hits the side of the net. And Carroll scoops it up. So that seventh goal officially to Judd, assisted by Martinson. Right off that restart after the slashing penalty call. Both teams back at even strength. Third quarter action. Checking out for the Spuds. Number 18, Schroeder, and checking in 15, Blythe. Comes, trots in here on the near side. Holding on the far side is Caleb Paquin. Paquin will back it out close to midfield, and now he will start his dodge, gets a little bit of screen. And that pass doesn't click, and it's going to be turned over to the skippers. That pass intended for Andrew Searles. Searles, check that, number eight. And now attempting to break it out of the defensive end come the skippers. Play it back around to Carroll. Carroll, the goalie, trots out about 10 yards from his goal, near side. This is Van Bergen and gaining the timeline. That's Sanders. And a touch there for the skippers. They are now in the attack. Eight minutes, 42 seconds to go, seven to two. Moorhead with the lead. Near side, is Sir, near side is Reddington as he will work against Cooper Sorby. And Reddington runs it in on assisted goal for Stephen Reddington, the junior midi. Makes it 7-3. And maybe that will ignite a skipper's comeback here. One minute slashing penalty called on number 22, Colby Cryer. And the skippers will not only have added that goal to make it seven to three spuds, but they'll also be on a one man advantage. Jakubic, again in the all white, Minnetonka all white with the blue numbers and trim. Spuds in the visiting orange. That's Oliver Judd. But winning that face off nicely is Jakubic and quickly on the man advantage. Skipper's looking to take advantage. They trail by four. Trotting on is Grant Anderson. Anderson has one of the three skipper goals tonight. Near side is Henry and now over to Bodie Richard. Richard behind his own cage. They go to the far side. This is Blanks. Blanks attempts to click with Forrest and doesn't quite do so. So with 31 seconds left on the man advantage, it's going to be the Spuds ball bringing it out of their own part of the field. This is Schroeder, and Schroeder can't connect. And quick turnover. Gives the skippers an opportunity on the restart. Near side here is Forrest. Forrest rush all the way behind his own net. Gets one to Schuster. Shot is high and wide. It's going to stay here with Minnetonka. Still 21 seconds on the man advantage. Forrest playing catch with Bodie Richard. Schuster lets fly again from the far side. Misses goal again, and now with 12 seconds left on the man advantage, the skippers will look to press the action. And it looks like an over and back violation against Minnetonka, so with just three ticks left on the man advantage, the Spuds take control. They get a touch in the attack zone. That's Oliver Judd, and now he'll back it off. Being pursued nicely there by Van Bergen. And Van Bergen gets a piece of that pass, but it's going to stay here 
with the visitors from Moorhead. Moorhead, again, will be playing a noon game against Minneapolis tomorrow, so they'll make the most out of this three-and-a-half-hour journey down from the Fargo-Moorhead area. This is Caleb Anderson. Anderson on the far side. And Minnetonka attempting to press the action. And uh, that shot bounces right in front and right to Sean Carroll. So it was Kaysen Sorbach, and he has four goals. He attempted to get his fifth there, but not enough. And a holding violation going to be called on Andrew Searles. Reddington turns it over, and there's your delayed penalty call. So referee's having a discussion here on the near side. Still sort out this penalty. Sounds like a one minute retaliation. So offsetting penalties on Sorbachen And Carroll and checking in, Jackson Woodley will go in to play defense. So Sean Carroll sitting out for a minute here. And so some time in net for Jackson Woodley. Jackson, a junior, get an opportunity. Personal foul coincidentals were the call. Want to thank our sponsors again. Had a nice chat with Luke Miller's dad. Luke Miller's father is uh, the owner of the Lakes Running Company, and they're one of our premier sponsors here, along with A. Sadowski Design, Canteen One, Denali Custom Homes, and Horizontal. And our halftime uh, event of was sponsored by North Star Lacrosse. Want to thank them for all that they do to support the skippers. So a couple of coincidental minor, non-releasable one-minute penalties. And now a lot of consternation right in front of the net, breaking out of with it is forced. Forced. Triple teamed and ball deflected and eventually controlled there by Baumgartner. Baumgartner will now cradle and wait to try to break out of the zone again. 27 seconds left on those one minute personal foul penalties. Ground, ground ball fought for and eventually controlled here by Sanders. Sanders works in and then flares it out near on the near side. Five minutes, 40 seconds to go, skipper's trail. Seven to three. Goal here would be critical to get the skippers back in this one. So both teams back at full strength and the skippers will change their goaltender. Great hustle there by Jackson Woodley. And coming back in, Sean Carroll. So Woodley gets the job done in his one minute of goaltending time and great hustle getting out. Schuster now on the near side, behind to Sanders. And that ball flies out of bounds. We'll go right back to the Spuds. Turnovers have been a bugaboo so far tonight for Minnetonka. That pass is errant and scooped up nicely by Luke Miller. The aforementioned Luke Miller with his long, stink, long stick on the defense. He checks out. Coming back in is Schuster, and the skippers will look to operate here on the offensive end. Henry now with it behind his own net. This is Blanks. Back to Henry on the far side with 4.22 to go. Looking to work a dodge is forced. Four and a 
flag comes down. There'll be a penalty on the next touch for the Spuds, and there it is right there. Number 12, slashing penalty on Ryland Hansbargen. So Hansbargen picks up the penalty. Man advantage here for the Skippers, and they could sure use it. Trailing by four with four minutes to go in the third quarter. Haas Bargain will serve that one minute penalty. And the Skippers will look to get organized on the offensive end. Shot is nicely saved there. Point blank shot from Forrest. And Johnny on the spot, Colin Baumgartner, a nice save for the Spuds as they look to burn off the remainder of this penalty. Ground ball opportunity here for Minnetonka. Battled for six, seven, eight skippers on the scene. And now a whistle. And a restart from Sanders. Sanders quickly into the offensive end. Sanders around one man. It's flared out to the far side. Nice defensive effort from the long pole on the near side. That was Colby Cryer to steer him free. And ball trickles out of bounds. Just four seconds remaining on the penalty to Hasbargen. Checking in for the skippers. Reddington, Reddington with one of the three skipper goals tonight. He wears the number eight. And he's a junior midi. Far side shot, score from Schuster. Ben Schuster with his second goal. Schuster plays for True Lacrosse, and he's going to go play at Mount St. Mary's. Division I club. He's got one more year here with the Skippers. Those are his future plans. Taking a peek at the rest of the Skippers ro roster, Kieran Holmes, he'll head to Division I Jacksonville University. Be a little bit warmer in late April down there in Jacksonville, I'm guessing. Jakubic ties it up with Judd, and now all six players battling for it, and Judd comes out with it. Judd on the accelerator, gains the touch, goes all the way in. His low shot is wide to the near side. Good hustle there from Sorbach, and keep it with the Spuds. Spuds now... Look to get organized with two minutes, 46 seconds to go. Third quarter. Seven to four is the score on a rain-soaked Friday evening in late April. Temperature's right around in the 50s, so it's not as cold as the rest of this month has been. Mostly short sleeves out there. Not for the fans sitting in front of me. I see a lot of umbrellas and a lot of jackets. But for those 15, 16, and 17-year-olds on the field, they're good with no extra clothing, especially burning off all these calories and exerting all that effort out on the turf. This is Jeff Unless, and now spinning in is Anderson. And Anderson tries to connect with Blythe, who eventually collects it on the near side. One minute, 40 seconds to go as Spud's content to burn time in the attack zone. Holding it out front is Unless, And now up back front is Blythe. Blythe will take it around to the other side. Almost intercepted there from Antonson. And that pass is broken up. Ground ball opportunity here for Minnetonka and scooped up well by JD. So JD will go back over to Sean Carroll, and Carroll will try to clear the zone with a minute and 16 seconds to go. Back to Carroll. As centering pass does not click with Landstrom, and now the other way, this is Cooper Sorby. 
Sorby's shot is deflected by his own player. That was Reddington and then controlled a whistle. A cross check called against the skippers on Jack McNeil. Sophomore Mitty will serve this penalty as we're down under a minute to go. Lights starting to take hold here as the rain continues to come down at a pretty good pace. Used to be an umbrella up here. Apparently, it is no longer. So restart here for the Spuds. McNeil cross-checking foul, one minute. 45 ticks left, and the Spuds looking to extend on this 7-4 to four lead. Skippers could use a turnover in the worst way. Three goal advantage going into the fourth quarter would not look quite as bad as a four goal advantage. And that one deflected, nicely defended, scooped up there by Langvin. Langvin on the gas on the far side. They've got 15 seconds left to operate. Bodie Richard. Richard gets a touch. Richard looks to burn some clock here. He did get the touch, so they're already in. And Richard will just run out the final 15 seconds of this third quarter. Score reads Spud 7, Skippers 4. We'll back with the final quarter of action here at Einer Anderson in just a moment. Twelve more minutes of boys varsity high school lacrosse for you here at Einer Anderson. The ring starting to really come down. Folks out there getting wet. And the Spuds gain the attack zone. That is number 11, Matt Peters, gets that touch and plays it out to Caleb Paquin. Goal scores tonight for Moorhead, Sorbakken with four, Judd with two, and Martinson with one. Skippers led in scoring by number 11, Ben Schuster, Jr. Mitty with two. Reddington and Anderson have chipped in a goal apiece. So with that three-goal advantage, there's a low shot, nicely saved by Carroll, a shot from Martinson from about 20 yards out, and Carroll almost turns it over as he's being double teamed. He does get the 
ground ball opportunity for the Spuds and controlled by Martinson. So unable to clear the zone. That's some really nice defensive forechecking effort from the Spuds. They keep it right here in their offensive end. Near side, this is Judd. Judd does have two of the goals. Works against Blanks. Gets around, takes a shot, and it's wide. Rushing towards that was Sorbakken to keep possession with the orange clad Moorhead. This is a loose ball now controlled by Blanks. Blanks will accelerate into the offensive end. Blanks gets a touch in the attack area. Double team checked away from him and another turnover. So just as quickly as the skippers get it into the attack zone, they lose possession and they get it right back on another errant pass. Martinson not able to collect there. Kieran Holmes, play it back to Sean Carroll and Carroll not given much time, does click on a pass with Reddington and Reddington being tracked down from behind, gets his attack zone touch and the skippers are back in business with 10 minutes to go in this contest. Checking out Landstrom coming in, Logan Yu, Yu a freshman midi, number 19. And he will work here against Cooper Sorby. Sorby, nice job defending that dodge attempt. Now behind his own net is Forrest. Forrest looks to the center to Bodie Richards. Shot got off just wide on the near side. A nice look there from Forrest to Richard. And one of the best scoring opportunities the Skippers have had here in the second half. Forrest will center it back over to Reddington. Reddington accelerates in. Behind the net is Richard, and Richard looking for cutters. And he'll let to stay on the far, far side to Reddington. Reddington, head of steam comes in, and his shot is saved and controlled by Colin Bar Baumgartner. Can't say enough about his efforts tonight between the pipes. He's been a difference maker for the Spuds. Spuds in the offensive zone. Shot near side is not on target. It's gonna stay here. That was Sorbachen working to get that quick shot opportunity for Moorhead. Now the restart in the near side alley. This is Andrew Searles. And Searles being instructed Going to go ahead and take a little bit of a break there. And now he's ready to restart. Might be an equipment issue, helmet. Either way, Searles goes all the way back behind his net. Ball dislodged from him by Kieran Holmes. Holmes in a battle back there, and Holmes still in there. Three other skippers, and eventually scooped out and, and finally controlled there by Langman. And so Cole will calm it, reset. Skippers with just eight minutes, 13 seconds, and they trail by three goals. Colby Sanders on the far side, and he'll look to attack against Caleb Anderson. Brings it back to Bodie Richard. Richard near side, and this is Isaac. So offensive has been really tough to come by for Minnetonka. Some issues with passing, some issues with ground balls, but overall some pretty stout defensive effort from the visitors. Schuster leads all skipper scores with two. He's a nice cut into you and he scores. Check that Annenson. I thought I saw 19, Logan Yu, but that was number 18, Grant Annenson. Gets his second goal, and now the Skippers draw this game to within two. Seven minutes, 23 seconds to go. Plenty of lacrosse left for Minnetonka to try to continue this comeback.
back in the face-off X. Jakubic and Judd. Near side for the skippers is Logan Yu. Judd battles for it. And still a ground ball opportunity, still no possession. And finally controlled here. Going to be a shot opportunity. Nice save from Carroll. Gets a big piece of that shot from Langvin. I check that from Oliver Judd. And now here come the skippers. A chance to trim this lead right back down to one. Skippers in transition and bad pass. Nicely intercepted. Ground ball, though. Still out there to be had and eventually controlled by the Spud. So a opportunity lost there for Minnetonka. Matt Peters works against Luke Miller on the far side. And a nice check there from Miller forces that ball free, another one. And now right at the midfield stripe, still battling for it, and eventually scooped up by the skippers. Colby Sanders thinks it got a little sloppy there for about the last 30 seconds. But now we're playing lacrosse. This is Sanders, again, skippers with another shot to draw this within one. Score reads Spud seven, Skippers five. This is Henry and now back around to Schuster as Skippers have the lineup in that they'd like for attack purposes. This is forced, forced low shot and does not get on goal and a flag, couple flags. And let's see what the call is here. Too many long poles is the call technical. 30 second violation gonna be served by Karsten Kuntz. So a 30 second man advantage for Minnetonka. Let's see if they can do anything with this. And another whistle. And officials looking to sort this out. 30-second penalty is now up on the board. And now we're ready to restart. It'll be blanks on the near side. Fifteen seconds left on this man advantage. Skippers down by two, 5.30 to go. Schuster here on the near side, spins it around. Out front, here's a shot and another beautiful save from Baumgartner. Baumgartner right there on the high side as Moorhead looks to get out of their own zone. Penalty is now expired. Both teams back at even strength. Timeout called by the Spuds. Five minutes, nine seconds to go. Skippers trail by two. We'll be back with the final minutes of action right after this. Skippers fans here making some noise here. Van Halen, you really got me going, got them pumped up.
Ground ball opportunity here on the near side. Nicely scooped by Searles and now turned back over to Minnetonka. Much needed there. Controlling was Van Bergen. Breaking out of the, off of the defensive end is Sanders. Sanders on the far side as we tick down under four minutes and 40 seconds to go. Skippers trail, to, trail by two, seven to five. Near side here is forced. As the skippers set up this attack, important one here in the waning moments. Antonson, as that one hit the side of the net and again controlled nicely by Baumgartner. Skippers now putting on the pressure, trying to prevent the spuds from getting into the offensive end. Nice dodge there and going around is Caleb Anderson. Anderson now goes all the way into the attack zone, shoulders his man and flips it over here to Martinson and now nice turnover, ground ball effort here. Van Bergen battling with that long pole. Third man comes in for Minnetonka. Checked and gonna go over to Minnetonka. Nice effort there from the skipper's defense. Chuck Mays and crew were able to regain possession. Nays is dumped on that one. Penalty called on Martinson. Martinson not giving the skipper's player enough room on the restart. And we'll get this sorted out. Thirty second delay of game called against Martinson. As the penalties have evened up. And the skippers look to take advantage of this man advantage. Three minutes, 35 seconds to go on the far side with it. Henry spins it around here to the near side over to Blanks. Skippers working it around. And now Blanks, and that pass does not click. And another turnover for Minnetonka. That's been sort of the story tonight. A nice check results in a turnover for Minnetonka. So Blanks makes up where it Hustles the other way, gets a turnover, and here comes the skippers again, Reddington. Reddington at midfield. Three minutes to go. Here comes Blanks. Blanks feeds in front to Forrest, and his shot is wide. It's going to stay here. Pretty nice play by the skippers to get that shot. Three minutes, three seconds to go. Bodie Richard now. This is Forrest on the near side. He works against Quinn Tweeten. Check that, that is number 11, Matt Peters. Behind the goal is forced. And that exposition now to Bodie and all the way around to the other side. Here comes Jackson Blanks. Blanks will rush in, beats one man. Nicely fed out to Schuster. Schuster with a little bit of time. Now he's got room, he'll shoot and score! Schuster with the hat trick. And the skipper's back to within one. Two minutes, 30 seconds to go. Score now reads, Spud seven, skippers six. And a big face off here for Jakubic. And Oliver Judd. Jakubic's been scrappy here. Not often winning them cleanly, but able to win some important possessions for Minnetonka. And does it well there. Now the ball is checked free. Fought for there by you. And eventually controlled hard check. Couple hard ones from Bodie Richard. Double team on the far end. And that one is coughed up. Here come the skippers, able to control that ball. That's Henry. Henry with it on the far side. Here's Isaac. Isaac. And a whistle. And a timeout call by Minnetonka. 
Skippers with a chip and a chair and a chance here. Two minutes, seven seconds to go. A score reads seven to six. We'll be back with these final two minutes in just a moment. Well, welcome back, Einer Anderson. Two minutes, seven seconds on the big screen. Skippers trail, seven, six. They will get the restart here on those all-white home uniforms. Skippers looking to continue the unbeaten ways. They are five and zero. Oh. Victories against Elk River, Zimmerman, Owatonna, STMA, Lakeville North, and most recently on Wednesday night over at Hopkins. And trailing by one. It's Reddington, and now on the far side, Henry plays it back behind to Bodie. Bodie directing traffic. He looks to work against Harbargan. Now back behind. Schuster is dislodged from his stick. Nice defensive work there from Thomas Schroeder. And that clearing attempt is Nicely saved, and there's an interception from Minnetonka. Great job there of anticipation by Chuck Mays. Mays now plays it back. This is Van Bergen. Van Bergen looking to free it over to the far side. This is Cole Langvin. And a timeout call by Minnetonka as they were struggling to get the ball out of their own defensive end. One minute, 17 seconds to go. They still trail by one, and they'll have a restart when we come right back. We officially have a Mr. Moon signing out here at midfield. Looks like he's gotten the gold-plated field access again to cover this game. Look for those photos on his Insta and Twitter. Doing what he can to keep his lens dry. Natalie attired in the all black. A Little bit of blue hoodie creeping out behind. Mr. Moon, strength and conditioning coach for a number of the athletic teams, including your boys varsity lacrosse club. 77 ticks left. Skipper's down one, and here's the restart. Reddington will work against, Ant against Alderson on the far side. Reddington feeds it back behind to Forst, and now Bodie here on the near side. One minute remaining. This is Blanks. Blanks twists in, back around. Skipper's patient on this offensive set, and a nice check there, but eventually controlled by Forst. Forst being hassled by that long stick. That is Matt Peters. And with just 40 seconds to go, Blanks looks to press the action on the far side. 
Forced, now behind it. We tick down to 30 seconds to go. Skippers trail by one. They need one to extend this game. This is Reddington. Reddington time and room, and he scores a high shot! Steven Reddington is static with himself, as well he should be. Ties things up with 21 ticks left. Reddington, his second goal. Skipper's seventh and coming all the way back. Minnetonka, they've been here before. And they're seeing if they can repeat history once again tonight on a rain-soaked Friday evening in Minnetonka. So a game that was mainly controlled by the visitors for the first three quarters. Skippers charge back here and tie things up at seven apiece. 21 seconds, huge face off here for Jakubic and Judd. Coming in from the near side for the Skippers, Antonsen and one nicely there by Judd. Judd on the gas. His shot is wide here and gonna go back to Minnetonka. 17.6 seconds to go. And a restart here from Mays. Mays will run it out from his own end. 11 seconds. Making good decisions here on Minnet Minnetonka. Reddington, six seconds to go. Reddington with four. Feeds inside. Bodie, juicy scores! A game winner! Bodie Richard! I can't believe what I just saw! Less than a second remaining, and the Skippers lead for the first time tonight. And it's the only time, it's the only time that matters. Phil Richard comes in, high-fiving. Don't blame him. It did look for a moment that the Skippers were content to kind of run this over into extra time. They got a nice opportunity. Richard, time and room, and he didn't miss. So what had been a great Goaltended game by Colin Baumgartner in the early going. Definitely frustrated with himself giving up a winning goal in literally the final second of action. And this game is over. Celebration time for the Skippers. They move to 6-0. and We'll be back here on Thursday against Wyzetta. For all my friends here at Minnetonka High School Lacrosse, Peter Amstutz signing off. Have yourself a great weekend.